Okay, so here in this question, they're asking you what happens when you add a mineral acid to an aqueous solution of borax, right? Which of the following compounds is formed? Your options are boron hydride, that's nothing but BH3. Orthoboric acid is H3BO3. Then you have metaboric acid, which is nothing but HBO2 taken N times, right? The basic empirical formula is HBO2. Okay, and then you have pyroboric acid, which is nothing but H2B4O7. Okay, so you have these formulae, you have these names. Okay, now you need to figure out what exactly is happening when you add mineral acid to an aqueous solution of borax. What is borax? I hope you remember that borax is Na2B4O7, right? That's the general formula of borax. To it, we are adding a mineral acid, okay? So first, let's take a look. So you can see, see, what is happening here is that we are adding borax to water, right? We are add, adding it to cold water. You can see that fine there is some amount of solubility but as you can see there is very little solubility correct sparingly soluble okay it's sparingly soluble in water so what do we do we go ahead and we heat it right so when we heat it and then again as you can see the solubility is increasing right it is soluble in hot water borax is sparingly soluble in cold water and it is uh, it has a good amount of solubility in hot water right so that is what is happening here after that what are we doing see so after we dissolve uh, borax in hot water you can see that a solution of concentrated hcl is added to the mixture right the mixture that was heated to that we have added concentrated hcl okay now we have added it and what do we do now we allow it to cool so as a result of cooling what happens see now after cooling there are some crystals formed right there are some crystals formed and now take a look at it these crystals are filtered okay so we're using a filter paper on a funnel we are removing the liquid right we're getting the liquid out and we got the crystals what are those crystals those are crystals of orthoboric acid h3bo3 correct okay so here take a look at it this is the um equation for it so we have borax reacting with hcl and water water is basically the medium right or we are talking about all of this in an aqueous solution okay so to this and as a product we got h3bo3 and this is nothing but orthoboric acid which uh precipitated out or which crystallized out of the solution upon cooling okay and we got NaCl which was in the solution okay so boric acid or orthoboric acid is what we call it correct okay so now let's take a look let's go ahead and mark the answers here okay so yes orthoboric acid is an option b so option b is going to become the right answer to this question okay so here you can see they have given us a reaction bf3 plus liAlH4 gives us x plus LIF plus ALF3, okay? They're asking you the incorrect statement regarding X, okay? So what is X? That is the first thing you have to know. We'll come back to the statements, right? We'll come back to the statements of X, but first we have to know what is X, okay? So here you can see that uh, we have been given the reaction. So BF3 is reacting with LIALH4 in the presence of ether or predominantly we are using an organic solvent we cannot use water for this reaction so we get b2h6 which is your x which is also called diborane correct now the moment we start talking about diborane of course we will discuss the structures and diborane has some pretty important chemical physical properties right and you have to remember the structure and all of that it's very important it's tested very frequently okay without a doubt it is tested okay apart from that we have lif and alf3 this was mentioned in the question x is diborane okay so yeah you can see they've used diethyl ether here as a solvent water cannot be used in this case okay so yes, that's what we have. Let's move on. So you can see this is the structure of diborane where, um, okay, where this is one boron, this is the other boron, right? So with respect to these borons, this becomes the terminal hydrogens. These are your terminal hydrogens. And here also you have terminal hydrogens. And then you have the bridging hydrogens. So here what you have is a 
थ्री सेंटर टू इलेक्ट्रॉन बॉन्ड और ऑल्टरनेटिवली वी ऑल्सो कॉल इट अ बनाना बॉन्ड ओके सो यू कैन सी द फोर टर्मिनल बी एच बॉन्ड्स आर रेगुलर टू सेंटर टू इलेक्ट्रॉन बॉन्ड्स ओके दैट्स फाइन वाइल द टू ब्रिज बॉन्ड्स बी एच बी बॉन्ड्स आर थ्री सेंटर टू इलेक्ट्रॉन बॉन्ड्स ओके ऑल्टरनेटिवली दे आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड बनाना बॉन्ड्स ओके so yes this is there why are we discussing all this because the question was actually about the properties of diborane right they asked you which of these is going to be the incorrect statement about diborane so we'll get back to the options like when we get back to the options it'll be very easy once we discuss all of this okay what else do we have now here we have the reaction of diborane with ammonia so the moment you talk about reaction of diborane with ammonia we have three different conditions okay so take a look first what do we have we have low temperature condition right so low temperature is one condition and then there is high temperature condition so in terms of high temperature um in terms of high temperature there are two different conditions low temperature excess nh3 you get an adduct okay this is an adduct that is formed right why do we get this adduct because you know that bh3 or diborane behaves as a lewis acid okay so here you have ammonia which behaves as a lewis base basically an adduct is formed apart from that when we come back to higher temperatures you have two different conditions first condition is with excess ammonia what do you get you get boron nitride okay and in a particular ratio in a fixed ratio where ammonia is taken twice um that of diborane in the moles ratio you get borazine borazine is also called inorganic inorganic benzene correct okay have to remember all of these things about diborane very very important okay i can't stress upon it enough cool take a good look at it hope you know all this now so now what do we have let's go back to the options let's see what is true what is false so option a is saying 12 electrons are involved in bonding think about it is this true yes this is definitely a true statement then it has four two center two electron bonds which is it has four normal bonds that is correct right the bh bonds the terminal bh bonds are four in number correct so this is going to be true then it has two Three center two electron bonds. Yes, so the bridge bonds that we have, the B H B bonds. So if I consider one plane, it will be one above the plane, one below the plane. Because of which I can say yes, we have two, uh, three center two electron bonds. That is correct. And X does not react with ammonia. That is not correct. X reacts with ammonia, and there are different conditions. That is, X is nothing but our diborane. Diborane reacts with ammonia. at different conditions we get different products also that is also an important set of reactions so this statement becomes false right so yes we had to pick out the incorrect statement so option d which is false becomes the right answer to this question okay so what we have here is a scheme of reactions they're not necessarily related but yes we have a scheme of reactions and in this scheme of reactions we need to identify the products which is nothing but x y z p and q so you can see that these are all reactions of boron compounds okay so one way or the other you have to know that uh, either this is talking about the preparation of things like a uh, diborane orthoboric acid or it is the properties of one of these things okay very very important set of reactions right let's take a look we'll come back to exactly what x y z uh, p and q is first i want you to understand the scheme of reactions okay so as i told you it's either the preparation or properties of diborane that is of like utmost importance in this chapter okay So what do we have? Laboratory method of preparation of diborane. So you can see sodium borohydride is reacting with I two. Okay, we get B two H six. This is our X. We get sodium iodide. That is our Y, and we get H two, which is our Z. Okay, cool. And then what else do we have? We get um, okay. When you treat D F three with sodium hydride, also you get diborane and sodium fluoride. Okay, so you can already see X Y Z and P are sorted from here. You have Four out of five of the products required. Okay, so yes, this is good, and you can see we have a certain temperature constraint as well, which means to prepare diborane from BF three and sodium hydride, we need to heat it. Okay, so yes, that is what is happening. After that, what do we have? 
Another method of preparation is by treating BF3 with lithium aluminum hydride in the presence of an organic solvent or in this case we are talking about a diethyl ether. Okay. So we get B2H6 which is definitely by now we have established that B2H6 is our X and LiAlF4 is Q. Okay. So X is nothing but B2H6 Y Z P and Q also we need to find out right. So P and Q. Q is here in front of me so I'm just going to write it LiAlF4. This is in front of me. What else do I have? I have Y which is sodium iodide. I have Z which is H2. Okay. So NaI H2 and this was NaF correct. P is sodium fluoride. Let's take a look. One second. Yeah. P is sodium fluoride. So yes. Now you have X, Y, Z, P and Q. Let's go ahead and match this with the options. So X is B to H6. Right. So I'm going to discard option A. Um, okay. Why is sodium iodide? Why is sodium iodide? So I'm going to discard C and D. Okay. Uh, option D also said B is, uh, sorry, X is BH3. So that could also have been discarded. So just quickly match it. Z is hydrogen, P is sodium fluoride and Q is LiAlF4. So yes, everything is sorted. Everything is matching. So option B is going to be the right answer to this question. Okay, so here they're saying that in diborane, right, that's all the question is. Basically, they're talking to you about the structure of diborane. What is the number of terminal hydrogens? What is the number of bridged hydrogens? You have to know these things about diborane, right? Okay, so take a look. Here we have a 3D orbital diagram of diborane. So you can see that this is your boron. So it's very visible. Let me use a bit of color. Hold on. So this is boron. This is also boron. Okay. Now here you have hydrogen. Here also you have hydrogen. Here you have hydrogen. Here also you have hydrogen. Okay. So you can see that this is also hydrogen. This is also hydrogen. Okay. So this is diborene, which is basically a dimer of BH3. That much we know. Now you need to understand that here you can see that they have drawn one plane here. Right. This plane passing through these four hydrogen atoms. Correct. So basically, if I draw a plane passing through both boron atoms and four of the hydrogen atoms, then I can say that there will be four BH bonds in that plane and the other two hydrogen atoms or the other two BHB bonds are going to be one above and one below the plane. Like very clearly it has been demonstrated here. So this is above the plane and similarly this will be below the plane. Correct? So this is what we have. These are uh, your bridging hydrogens. Let me... Let me write it clearly. So these are your bridging hydrogens and these are your terminal hydrogens. Okay, so this is terminal, terminal, terminal and terminal. So you can see I have four terminal BH bonds. Correct. And I have two bridging bonds and bridging bonds will not be BH bonds. They'll be BHB bonds because they are three center two electron bonds. Okay. One second. Okay, good. So what do we know? Uh, we know that we have two of uh, three center, two electron bonds, which is nothing but banana bonds. You can call them bridge bonds, banana bonds, uh, three center, two electron bonds, whatever you want to call it. And the thing is, these are all different names and you have to be familiar with these because they are tested very often in competitive examinations. Okay, so yes, this is what happens. Now let's go on and mark the options, right? What is going to be the right option? So it has four bridged hydrogens and two terminal hydrogens. That is not correct. This is false. Okay, it has two bridged hydrogens, correct? And four terminal hydrogens. Okay, that is true. Three bridged and three terminal hydrogens. That is not correct at all. Please, please don't mark this. This is false. So uh, option B is the true point, which means option B is going to be the right answer to this question. Okay, another question on diborane. They're asking you uh, how many electrons are involved in the formation of the BHB bond in B2H6. So we have the bridge bond, right? We have the bridge bond uh, in B2H6 in diborane. They're asking you how many electrons are involved in the formation of the bridge bond. Okay, so take a look. We have the structure of diborane here and we know that, what is this? This is your boron. This is the boron. This is the bridging hydrogen. This is the bridging hydrogen, right? These are your terminal hydrogens. 
and the terminal bonds are normal bonds they are two center two electron bonds why am i saying two center two electron bonds because that is exactly where the bridge bonds are different right i'm just highlighting one of the bridge bonds because here in the bridge bond you have a three center right you have boron hydrogen and boron you have three centers but only two electrons okay you have a three center two electron bond okay so what did we hear three center two electron bond which means two electrons are involved in the bond formation in the case of a bridge bond right so yes answer is going to be two electrons and option a two electrons becomes the right answer to this question 